Hey Ubers, Vivian here with a mixed media video tutorial. Um, this is focusing on October's Scraps of Darkness uh, color add-on. I'm going to use the set of Lindy Stamp Gang mists that we received. I don't know if you guys were as excited as I was, but I had been eyeing this um, industrial chic collection of mists from Lindy Stamp Gang. It's very new. And um, I didn't end up having to order it because it came in my Scraps of Darkness color add-on. We also got a mask that's in the shape of a spider web, which is very convenient for um, projects coming soon, Halloween projects. Um, but I actually decided to do something a little bit different. I will be using primarily just these mists, and I just wanted to share with you what they look like on paper before we get started. So the first one that I spritzed is called Steel Shimmers, and it's silvery, and you don't really see it so much while it's wet, but once it dries, it really adds a nice sheen to your project. And the second one, that greenish uh, color, is called Rusty Lantern Lime, and I really, really like it. Um, it's kind of muted, and it's got a little bit of shimmer. The brown color, that third color, is called Steampunk Sepia. And we got two blues in really gorgeous colors. This first one is called, hold on, come here. Those of you guys who were concerned about how she's doing post-surgery, she's doing great. She's back to her self, old self, but I still have her wearing her sweater so she doesn't get the impulse to lick. So the first blue that I spritzed is called um, Shabby Turbine Teal. It's, got a, it's a little bit greener. And that second bluer one is called Time Travel Teal. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be using these colors. Um, I'm just going to add one more color into the mix. Um, but they are very beautiful. I'm really excited about them. And I'm just seeing how they all mix together, moving some color around to see what looks good. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. So I'm sure a lot of you guys, um, you paper crafting and mixed media enthusiasts are thinking about Halloween, but I don't know if you caught my last video. When I see all the Halloween product coming out and spider webs and spiders, I stop thinking about Halloween and I start thinking about spiders and how beautiful and powerful they are and how beautiful their, their webs are as well. So um, I'm going to do a mixed media canvas this is actually a 12 by 12 uh, sheet of watercolor paper, and I'm just sketching out some guidelines, really. And really, guidelines is exactly what I would call them because I'm not going to limit myself once I get my hand on the glue gun to following those lines exactly because the glue gun is going to handle differently than a pencil and I just want to have sort of a freedom of movement. So really it's just a guideline to get started with these anchors for the spider web. So I'm going to make a spider web out of hot glue and um, sort of just a, a point so I know where I want to have the center of my spider web. So I made a little center, um, little circle in the center. Um, for something like this, I'm not looking so much for random squiggles or um, vascular types of squiggles. So I'm keeping my uh, glue gun very close to my paper. Um, and I'm OK with uh, the, variety, the slight variety and width that happens as I move my glue gun across the paper. Um, to finish off each line, I sort of um, make contact with the tip of the glue gun, as you can see, and sort of drag it off. I'm going to be adding lots more texture all around the edges, so I'm not in extremely concerned with what happens at the very edge of the anchor and strings of the spider web. Because the glue gun is so close to your paper, you uh, run the risk of possibly dragging the glue gun into um, paths that you've already drawn with your hot glue. So um, what I found works best is to constantly turn my paper so that um, so that the path of my glue gun never runs into freshly drawn lines of hot glue. So I drew some lifelines. Um, 
with some extra little strings all along the anchors um, to help build a very strong web. And um, after I finished that, now I'm starting to add those beautiful web, webbed curved lines. Um, I very intentionally set the center of my web off center from the anchors so that I'd get some interesting, interesting lines and shapes and um, irregularities. And as you can see, I'm constantly turning my, my canvas so that um, freshly drawn lines of hot glue don't get um, disturbed. Isn't that beautiful, though? So it's quite beautiful, transparent like that. I'm, I'm actually going to um, finish up this web, and then I'm going to cover uh, much of it with gesso, white gesso. So this is what the hot glue web looks like so far. On a different project, it might be nice just to leave it like that without any media on top. So it kind of glistens the way webs do um, early in the morning with um, morning dew. I picked up some uh, string gel, and I wanted to see um, how that would compare to my hot glue. Um, the consistency is, is um, thinner, more, more dilute than the hot glue. Um, and I found that the, the way I ended up really enjoying working with it was uh, just to um, hold it up really high and let it drizzle um, in little squiggly shapes all over my canvas. So um, I practiced a number of different gestures, but like I said, in the end, I kind of preferred just the very slight, tiny squiggles that happened when you um, had a very thin stream, just like that, just like that. This stuff takes a lot longer than hot glue to dry also. Um, and I know you can mix it with uh, pigments as well. Um, I, I was just interested in texture for this project, so I didn't do that. I smeared some of it around with my fingers as well, and it turned out that um, those areas with smeared string gel uh, masked some of the paper as well, so it added a little bit of a resist to the pigment. I set my heat tool on the string gel that I had applied to my watercolor paper, and uh, I was really pleased with the bubbling that happened because it added an extra level of a texture and grunge to the little strings that I had applied. Um, I looked all over the bottle and I looked on the web. It didn't say anything about not heating it or dangers of heating it. But I would say just to be safe, um, if you do this, do it in a well-ventilated area um, so that you're not inhaling fumes. This part of the project was really fun. Um, it was a similar kind of thrill you get from when you heat emboss, um, but the way that this stuff crackled and bubbled made it almost feel like it had come to life, like it was pulsing with, with blood. <laughs> um, so after that, I uh, went over much of it with gesso. Um, I wasn't too careful about it. I just sort of went over random places with gesso. I wanted to make sure that the spider web was um, well covered with gesso um, because I want the pigment to show up nicely and I want it to dry quickly. So if you guys have um, followed the videos I've been producing recently on my channel here on YouTube, that's Contadina K, you know how I like to miss. And um, I'm doing uh, a technique that I've shared in recent videos, which is um, combining tapping the tube from within the the, mist, the misting bottle, tapping that pigment onto my paper surface, and um, alternating that with water. And that creates um, some nice movement of color on your page. So I'm using some of these beautiful colors that were included in our kit. This is the um, Indie Chic Collection from Lindy's Stamp Gang. 
And areas where, you know, I'm not too psyched about intense color or pigment, um, I just wipe, tap it off with um, a paper towel, trying to encourage some um, movement of the pigment along the trails of hot glue and string gel that I've created. I added some of that rusty lantern lime, which is just a beautiful, um, slightly shimmery olive type of green. Um, perfect as part of an industrial chic collection, I think. And I added some of the uh, steampunk sepia right in the center of my web. And um, because there's there are so many tight patterns in the center of the web. I'm trying to uh, encourage some of the darker colors to go there so that they can um, be drawn out just a little bit more. You guys have seen me do hot glue stuff before. So we encourage the pigment, the mist to pool in all the nooks and crannies. Never get tired of this. So like I said, I really want to draw out those beautiful spider web patterns that we spent so much time on. Um, so I'm adding just a little bit of black, just a little bit, um, in those areas where the web patterns are most detailed, so I can really bring out those patterns later. So this is what everything looks like at this point in the process. Everything's still very wet, um, and once it dries, uh, it will dry a little bit lighter. So that's something to keep in mind. So once everything dried, I sort of stepped back and looked at what I had. And um, I wanted a little bit more intense pigment in certain areas. And I really love that um, rusty lantern line. So I added that in um, various areas of the canvas and tried not to dilute that too much with water. While that was drying, uh, I decided to put in some words um, I think all of us have had experiences, um, relationships and experiences that we've had a hard time letting go of, or um, circumstances that made it impossible for us to have certain experiences in our lives. Um, I was actually invited to a yoga class by my friend here in Vegas, my friend Angie. Thank you, Angie. Um, we went to a yoga class at Sin City Yoga with Erica. And um, she said during the class something that I just really needed to hear, um, which was that we should aspire to gracefully let go of that which was not meant for us. Um, which I'm finding, um, and, and maybe you guys have had the same experience, is not a very easy challenge to take on, to gracefully let go. Um, and the reason this sentiment is on this particular painting is because I think sometimes it's easier to sort of let those desires sort of linger in the dusty corners of our consciousness. And um, this is where, you know, little things accumulate, little spiders make their webs. So that's why this is on this canvas. I added some um, pigment ink. This is Colorbox uh, Clear Snap Mixed Media Inks, INX. I used a white color, I think it's called Jasmine, and a greenish color as well. Uh, I think that one might have been called Olive to sort of draw out all of those raised textures that we created with the hot glue and the string gel, which in the end, I'm, I'm really liking a lot. Um, the texture is, is different than the hot glue, but both of them seem to go to go together well, especially since we misted the whole thing with a nice palette of colors that all um, go really nicely together. So let me try to bring in the camera a little bit and show you what this all looks like close up. Got a lot of texture here. Some nice mixing of mists, some nice pooling and drizzling. And I, I one thing I want to um, say that I think works for me 
that might work for you is to make sure to maintain some areas that are pure white or light. Um, it helps the darker areas stand out more. One thing thing of that one thing that I added that I must have not pressed record um, were some little um, little droplets of morning dew. So I don't know if you can see that in this close-up shot, but I added little droplets of morning dew. This was created just with hot glue and nothing else on top of the strings of the spider web. So here's another shot of the morning dew. And uh, here's a shot of the textures that we created. Uh, one thing I wanted to note is that I think it looks nice when um, you create irregularities. Um, if all of the spaces were the same between each piece of the net, um, I don't think that would be as interesting as each piece being different. So there is some strategy involved in where you place your hot glue lines. Here's a shot of the words from our yoga teacher. And here's a shot of some of the string gel that we applied. And here's the full canvas. I want to thank you guys so much for your support here and elsewhere on the web. When I look at my statistics on my blog and I see lots of clicks coming from different sources, I click back and I find that a lot of you guys have linked up to my blog. Um, sharing with your audience that um, I've inspired you. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you're so inclined, please feel free to share this video link. If you look in the description box below, there will be a share button and you can click all these different buttons for all these different social media networks like Twitter and Instagram and Pinterest uh, where you can um, share something that inspires you here with folks that are like-minded. So thanks again so much for watching. This is Contadina K. Uh, you can visit me on my blog as well, and that's contadinak.com. And to see more about the supplies that I used, all the myths that I used in this video tutorial, you can visit scrapsofdarkness.com. Thanks again. Happy Halloween, everybody. Bye.